Hello, hello, everybody, and happy Tuesday, and welcome to another edition of In the Spotlight. And tonight, joining me, we have Annette Parker of ASP Coaching, and Annette is here to talk to us tonight about how frequencies can work with your energy and your mindset. So in 2014, Annette was introduced to an instrument that totally shifted her life. And since then, she's been using those tools in her coaching practice as an empowerment coach to assist in shifting the energies in and around her and allowing her to be happier and more fulfilled. For most of her existence, Annette had never felt good enough or worthy enough to achieve what others were getting in life. And at her high school reunion, the common statement from, my, from her classmates was, holy crap, you're still alive. So you see, Annette's had a bit of a colorful past, but that is exactly what it is. It's in the past. And the adversities that she has dealt with in her life allows her to be able to identify with almost any life situation that she might be faced or anyone might be facing. So by sharing what she's able to see. It's like a totally different perspective. She helps people to shift into a new mindset and into a new life, basically. And Annette claims that she's a perceptionist. So she helps people see, hear, feel on a completely different level. And that's done through using the gifts that God has given her and the tools that she's gained throughout her years of training and workshops. I met Annette um, many years ago. Like You're living on like, West Mount. Yeah, it was at least it was longer than eight years ago. I think it was like 2011, so like nine years now. And she, you, I believe I went to you for reflexology or you came to me for hot stone. I don't even remember at this point. I think it came for hot stone originally. Yeah, yeah. And that became a friendship. And I have watched Annette blossom and just really create some amazing things in her business. So I'm very excited to have her on here tonight and share her knowledge and her gifts with all of you. And she's got some amazing technology stuff too. So you guys are in for a treat tonight. So welcome, Annette. Thank you for being Thank you. here. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Yes, yes. So <laughs> can you tell me, like, how exactly did you shift into the energy of working with the... Uh, I don't even know what I call them. IQ? IQ instrument. Yeah, my phone just made noise. I'm just going to make sure yeah, I thought absolutely. I did cut it off, but it didn't. So <laughs> what is an IQ instrument? Can you explain that to us? Sure. I'm going to move the thing here a little bit just yep. so everybody can see. So these pieces of these beautiful beings basically are what's called eye cubes. And what they do is they are um, inside of each of one of these. This is the miracle eye cube. Inside each one of these is uh, something called a mirror coil. They're originally created by quantum sound therapy. And inside is a, a, mirror, a mirror coil, which is a copper coil with flower essence, gold essence, the five noble gases, which then creates a scalar energy field. Now, sometimes when I've done this before, like at trade shows and stuff, they go, well, how many hertz of energy is it giving out? Well, there's two different forms of energy. There's scalar energy and there's Hertzian energy. Now, scalar energy is the energy of the sun, the moon, the stars, and the universe. So it's not really measurable, not at this time anyways. I imagine at some point they might try to measure it, but what it does is it creates a scalar energy field and there's um, frequencies that are played on it. So they're on either like a, an iPad or a MP3 player and there's different frequencies that come with each of them and they're created specifically for the IQ. And the frequencies, some of them are for like clearing. Um, there's, so there's a clearing one, there's a focus one, there's a whole bunch, there's a whole array. We have daytime ones and nighttime ones. I should have brought my pocket cube with me too because it's, it's upstairs. I never even thought of that. I just have it with me all the time. I don't even, they're here, right? They're part of my life. Um, but the pocket cube is a little bit smaller than this. And it's just the smaller cylinder. It's probably about that round. And it's a, a portable one that you can carry with you anywhere that you go. So it creates a scalar energy field around you. The pocket one, the portable one is about a five foot. Tesla over here, this big one, she is, there's Tesla. Um, what do I have here? I have Tesla. I have Harmony. I have a Focus and then the Miracle IQ. They're all basically created the same, but they all have a different intention. 
And um, the one way it was explained to me the one time, because I thought, well, they all have noble gases and they all have this, you know, the same things inside. They're just the different amounts of coils. Why are there so many of them and why are they different? And the person who, uh, my mentor, Bill Little from Clearly Conscious Energetics, he explained it to me this way, which made total sense. He says, you have a car, you have a motorcycle, and you have a cube van. They all have wheels, they all have an engine, they're all a form of transportation, but they all have a different intention. Mm. And I thought, okay, that makes sense, right? So the focus IQ is for basically for bringing more focus and clarity. Harmony is to bring harmony. The miracle is, yeah, it is a miracle. Um, it seems to work more on our physical being than it does on the energetic being, on the like the etheric fields. The other ones seem to work more on the etheric field. And um, geez, I just totally lost my train of thought there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's not uncommon but uh with each of the oh the tesla so the tesla though let's talk about the pocket i cube does about five feet around you and each of them go the field is like and when you have a, a drop a stone into water and it creates the ripple effect right so yeah. you've got the rings going out well we all know that those rings continue expanding expanding and expanding and expanding for you know infinity well it's similar with the cube so when you first turn it on it creates that little wave and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger um tesla can actually surround the circumference of the earth in four days wow so it's actually her, her intention is for healing the earth. So I've got her running right now with this COVID stuff going on because the earth's doing so much healing. Mm -hmm. And the neat thing is, is they talk to each other. So my Tesla here will speak with, there's a, another a piece of equipment out in Elmira, which will speak with the ones. That, so they all kind of connect, like creating a grid all around the globe. So it's really awesome that way. And I know the first time um, that I got introduced to them, not the first time I got introduced to them, but one of the times when um, Bill and Ann, Andrea were here, they uh, were working out my shop. And I had, after they left, I had some errands to run and I was driving down. I went about five blocks from my house. And it was like, as I was driving down the road, I also just kind of went like this. And I went, whoa, what was that? It was like going through a, a curtain, like an energetic curtain. And later on, when I asked him about it, because I was really new to the tech at that time, and they explained that the, that was likely how far the field had traveled in the period of time. So they, it had literally expanded from Friday night at midnight till Sunday at five. It had gone five wow. blocks where I could literally physically feel that energetic field that I went out of. That is crazy. It was. Now I don't even feel them really that much because like I'm like a walking IQ. They've been in my life for so long and they're like running here. And most you really, if you're interested in something like that, you only need one. Like I, I got this hoarder complex. So <laughs> <laughs> so I have a lot of them, right? <laughs> I, I make sense though, because there's going to be times where you might have to help someone say with harmony. And another time where you're going to have to help someone with focus. So it makes sense that you have all of the different ones, you know? It's, Thank you for that. But no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, I remember right. when uh, we were at a quantum healing show at Unity Church. And yeah. we had had like a small little break. And you said, come here. And you introduced me to someone. I don't even remember who it was. And then you, I believe it was the pocket one that you had yeah, me carry exactly. around. And it, it made me feel good. But the thing that I was so, I guess, taken back by or like what the hell by was I usually after a show am feeling so drained of energy and I just want junk food. Like it is like, just give me junk food, replenish me, right? And I went home and I had a snack pack, like a jello pudding type thing. And it tasted like chemical. I have not wow. been able to eat them since because all I can taste is the chemical. And I'm like, it, it could be an honest weight loss machine for me because <laughs> it changed the way I taste things. It was absolutely incredible. So that's, that's my experience with the machine. <laughs> well, if you're interested, I do have a couple units for sale. <laughs> awesome. I will chat, I will chat with you after. <laughs> So 
So when you're working with clients, then how would you know, I, I guess, is it an intuitive thing that, you know, like this is the machine they need to be working with? Is it a joint effort? So I know you do the coaching and you mm -hmm. also do energy healing, and then you've also got these frequency machines. So is that like a combo type package or how does that all incorporate together to help someone? Well, um, as the many people who know me, one of the things that people have said to me is, is they have no idea what I do because I do so much. So what I'm doing now is I'm incorporating it all into one package. And with the coaching packages that I have is I would bring a client in and I would discuss it with them. All of my technologies are hooked up at the, to this together. So when I'm playing a set of frequencies, they're all playing the same one because I found that if um, it would be like playing like country music and rap at the same time, if you're in the same room, it just, it's crazy, right? The energy and the frequencies is just, there's too much if there, if there's different frequencies going on. So I would put the same track on. So I would usually, I intuitively prior to the client coming, I'm like, oh, okay, so what does, what does the room need? What frequencies do we need in here? And I'll play the track and I'll either intuitively put it on repeat or I'll create a playlist. So a lot of that has to do intuitively. Also um, with the coaching, I would, there, we, there's something else we can do with this and it's called uh, soul tones. Okay, so with our, our voice is unique as our fingerprint and our DNA. Everything about us is carried in the sound of our voice. So I take a 15 second voice sample, which creates a set of frequencies by putting it, playing it through a award-winning computer program that analyzes 1.5 billion bits of information from your voice and creates a set of frequencies that are specifically designed for you to help you release those energetic blocks within you that may be stopping from you from moving forward. Similar to what you said about the, your experience with the, the gel, right? Like it shifted something in you. So these are frequencies. We've all probably heard of binaural beats or binarial beats. I never know, never know if I'm pronouncing Wait, that correctly. Second. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what that does is the, the binaural beats or the binarial beats are usually two, right? And our frequencies are on a scale of six. So they go into the energetic fields, they go into the spiritual realms, they go into all the different areas of a, the different of our authoric fields and help balance out those frequencies. Um, an example, so with the coaching, what I would do is I would usually send the client home afterwards if they're open to it. You know, if they've got the full program, it's part of the pro program. If you're coming for a single coaching call, it would be an extra, but I would send that home. And so at the beginning of my coaching program, I give you a set of frequencies and they're recommended to be changed every 30 days, uh, once a month. So then halfway through, you would get a second set of frequencies because as we're going through the program, things are going to be shifting, things are going to be coming up, things are going to be happening. So you want to get something different. So that'll go again for the 30 days. And then at the end of the program would be another set of frequencies. So those are included in the program. Um, one thing, like when I first was introduced to this in 2014, I came back after the session and I went out for supper with my boyfriend and he's like, we're sitting there eating. He's like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, I literally felt like I was high, like that I was just floating on air. It was an unbelievable experience after my first sound session. And I was just, oh my gosh, this is insane. He goes, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I says, well, and I couldn't explain it to him because I didn't understand it. All I know is I felt different. Something shifted, something changed. And I says, well, I went to a thing. He says, yeah, well, you've gone to things before and you've never come back like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know it was a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty crazy. With the, um, the soul tones, though, when I started listening to them after that first uh, introduction in April of 2014, I didn't really know what they were doing like they suggest that you sit down and listen to it with a you know set of headphones and go into a meditative meditative state well at that time it's like oh, my life is too busy i don't have time to sit for 20 minutes and listen to these things so i just kind of played them in the background right and i would have them like i get up in the morning and i would put them on i had them on a cd player and i would push play and i would let them go and then when i came home i listened to them and stuff and i didn't really notice a whole lot of change right i'm like oh Okay, because it's subtle energies, right? And 
then I remember that my son would sit down with a bowl of cereal. I always use this story. I love this. It's called, I call it the story of spilt milk. <laughs> okay. So he would sit down with a bowl of cereal. He'd fill up the bowl, like up to here, put the milk into it, stick the spoon into it. The cereal would go all over the table. The milk would go all over the table. I'm like, why don't you just do have two bowls? Like, why do you try to put so much? Anybody who has children probably under identify with what I'm saying. Yeah. But <laughs> it's like, why can't you? It's like, oh, and I, I, you know, I'd be all upset and I would let it, you know, bother me. And it's like his behavior was affecting me and I was allowing that to happen. Yeah. And then one day I walked into the kitchen and I looked at the table and <laughs> hell of a mess he got to clean up there, eh? And kept going to wherever I was off to get coffee. Or, and I got to the other side of the kitchen and I went, whoa, hold on a second. What just happened there? Because every other time I would get upset. And this time it didn't even fizz me. I laughed about it. So I'm like, hmm, maybe there is something to this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. That's awesome. Now you do have a question here from Angela. She's wondering how much the uh, pocket ones are. The pocket ones retail for $1,000 US. So we do have them on, uh, there is, it is possible to get a payment plan for them. Uh, Angela, if you're interested, just message me and I can give you the details on it. All right. Thank you. So you're welcome. when people... Okay. When you're talking about the frequencies, obviously they're coming into the body, they're shifting everything up, right? Is there like a regular tone or a regular frequency that most people are operating in? Good question. I would say no. And okay. this is just from my intuition because I asked, right? It's like, are we we would not all radiate at the same frequency, right? We're constantly changing because we are energetic beings. We are mm -hmm. unique, yet we're still similar. We all probably, I would say, we probably resonate with the frequency of like the Schumann, the Schumann frequencies. Like we do have that resonant frequency. So if they're higher, some people who are really sensitive will experience different things. I would not say that there is a frequency that we all resonate at at the same time. Okay. But yeah, that makes sense. Me, because, yep, go ahead. But I will say just something that popped in when I've done sound sessions. So when we do a group sound session, we take the vo the frequency of everybody's voice. We take a recording of the voice and then listen to that at that time and in that place and in that moment. I would say that many of us are re resonating at the same frequency from what we're hearing, what we're experiencing from the tones and from the technologies, because I've been to places where you know, we're listening to it and there's a group together. So if there is a group together within the same frequency, then there is a possibility that we would all be resonating at the same time. Okay, very cool. So I'm like, that makes sense then with the grid around the world because actually what you're doing is getting everyone to be I, I see vibrations as frequencies and I could be totally wrong that's why I keep <laughs> showing Jettery <Jennery's> hands okay. <laughs> um, after too much wine <laughs> yeah um, but I would see it as like it, it's literally creating harmony within the world because raising consciousness is what it's doing it's raising the consciousness of the of mankind and allowing us to move into those other dimensions. Because as many of us know right now, like we have the third dimensional world, but we're shifting into the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and so on and so forth, depending on, we talk about raising our own frequencies. So ways that we can raise our own frequencies is by going for walks in nature, meditation, laughter. That's one way of um, raising frequencies. Like I know with the laughter yoga that I do and that I share is, Often when I'm sitting here and I'm just totally, you know, just, you know, something's upsetting me or I'm feeling off, I will just sit and laugh. Yeah. And it's amazing. Like even anybody who works out, you know, if you're, if you're somebody that works out on a regular time, like I, I, I'm not a big fitness person, but I've even noticed that myself that when I'm not with this uh, COVID thing, I've been making an effort of doing it on a daily basis because I'm not out and moving around as much. And I'm finding that if I miss a day, the next day I'm feeling yucky, 
But as soon as I do my little fitness routine, it raises my vibration, which then raises me up, makes me feel better and lift, well, it lifts us up, right? Raising frequency is lifting us up. That's awesome. Um, so do you have any other tricks that you would like to share with people about raising their frequency and kind of raising that vibration? I know you just said about the meditation, the laughter yoga, um, going for a walk in yeah, meditation. Going, or even nature is the it. best way to, nature is the best way to clear and raise your vibration. Absolutely. Because it, it allows you're connecting with nature. Um, I'll often people will stop and kind of go, especially now with this COVID thing. So I'll stop on a path and I'll watch a squirrel play. Right. And there's nothing that lifts my heart than watching a couple squirrels play. Today I was out for a walk and I heard some rustling in a tree and I looked up and two birds, I don't know if they were mating, but they were carrying on and fighting. And I just got this big smile on my face and I'm like, looked around, okay, nobody's coming. I can stand here and just look at the tree. <laughs> because yes. people kind of, you know, and keep the distance. If you're standing in the middle of the sidewalk, they got to go out in the road or whatever. And yeah. <laughs> I just get absorbed by it. Um, those I would say would be the three major ones, right? Okay. Like those are, they're easy, right? They're easy thing. Uh, breathing, right? Breathing brings us back to centeredness. Like I do the conscious breathing that is uh, through Greg Braden uh, part map right? The six seconds in, six seconds out. There's the other ones that you can, you know, there's all sorts of different ones. And I always say, you know what, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that what I'm sharing is the end all, right? You got to find one that works for you, right? It's like meditation. When I first got introduced to meditation, I always read about meditation. It's like, oh, quiet the mind and be still and be peaceful. Well, when I started doing medicine or med medicine, meditation, <laughs> My, like I had a rat race in here, man. Like there was a, a, there was a hamster on a wheel and it was spinning and there was no way you were quieting this mind. So I used guided meditations because I found that I could focus onto that. And uh, through time and different, different forms, I use this in my meditations. I'll throw this on and it's like, literally I'll put my tones on and I'll lay down and have, you know, go into a meditative state and let's do it halfway through. I want to rip them off and go clean the house. Like it just lifts me up and snaps me right out of it. Other times, if I'm working through something, um, like maybe the first or second time that I'm listening to the tones, because I, when I get new sets of tones, it is usually working on something through it within me. So it may be, make me feel uncomfortable. But after, you know, if I'm getting up halfway through to clean the house and I know it's time to get a new set of tones because it's, <laughs> it's cleared whatever is meant to be cleared there. Yeah. <laughs> now... I know you talk a lot about the adversities that you had to experience or not that you had to experience, but the adversity. Oh, I know I had to experience them. Okay. I did um, have to experience them to be who I am today. Right. It's, a, it's true. Um, so what shifted for you in those early days that allowed you to step onto the path that you're on now? I mean, if you want to talk about the adversities that you mm -hmm. face, you can. Um, I don't want to put you in the spotlight on that, because to me, it's not so much about what you had to experience, but rather what shifted for you where you went, you know what, I'm going to start taking control of my life again. Wow. Um, it's interesting. I've been in the process of writing. I just, as you know, Catherine, I just finished uh, my first ebook. It's not completed. I still got a few edits to do. So I have done a lot of deep soul searching over the last few weeks. Plus, I haven't really had anywhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> what shifted? It's there's been so many different times in my life with different adversities. Um, take control of my life. You know something? I wouldn't even say at this moment that I have control of my life okay. because control to me is almost feels like a negative, right? And that could be because of my tapes and the programming that I've had. But, you know, like you have control of a car, but do you really have control of that car? Because if the tire blows on the car, you're going to lose control, but you have to be able to maneuver or pivot or change or like, oh my gosh, what do I do now so that I can save myself? So it's a quick, it's, it's more about, you know, having trust within myself, okay. having trust within, uh, with a higher power or God or universe, whatever guides, you know, whatever your belief is, it's fine. Um, 
but it's having that trust, a trust in something, right? Trusting in something and that inner knowing that whatever it was that was going on at that time wasn't right. You know, I'll use the example as a child, right? You know, I, um, I come from an, a mentally, me mentally, physically, and uh, emotionally abusive home. And that resulted in me not feeling good enough, not feeling worthy, not, feel, not feeling loved, even though my parents loved me the best they could, but I didn't feel the love. I didn't get what I was needing. And I would go out and I would, you know, I had, a, I had an imaginary friend, right? And I remember this imaginary friend. And to me, this friend was completely real. Like she was there. And after about six months, my mom's like, okay, enough of this. This is, this is foolishness. You need to, you know, stop this. And it's like, but mom, like, I'm not making this up. She's right here. I'm not making her up. And she came with me all the time. Ha, this just reminded me something of Catherine. You always say I have a little girl with me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, I just I just put the two one and one together there. Holy crap. <laughs> Thank you. I don't even remember saying it. So there we go. <laughs> um, but it was, I had to, you know, I had to have that conversation with her and ask her to leave. But in my heart, like, even though the adults around me told me that I was, you know, that, oh, you're making it up, it's not real, like, uh, and even the, the healings and things that I did as a child, like, it's devil's work, it's this, it's that, you know, so I, I brought, that's where the tapes came in, that's where the programming came in from all of that, those parts, but in my heart, I knew that there was something more, in my heart, I knew it was the truth, so whenever the adversities came about, I had to go into my heart and my heart spoke to me because we have like, we have the head brain, we have the heart brain and we have the gut brain. And it's following that heart. Like I had to get out of my head, get into my heart and my gut. And, or maybe at some instances they were like, okay, you're not ready. It's not time for you to die yet. So you better do something about it. And they talked to my head and got me changed. You know, interesting question. <laughs> They tell me what to ask. <laughs> I'm sure they do. <laughs> so then you obviously had like a turning point, okay, from the adversity that you were experiencing into who you are now. And I know when I first met you, I didn't really know a whole lot about you. But over the years, there's been a lot of stuff shared. And what always amazes me about you is just how positive you are. Like, it's almost like, I want to call it a fuck it attitude where you're just like always ready to take on the next adventure, regardless of what all of this back here has happened. It's like, and you're so passionate about it. You get so excited about it. You've got so much to share about what it is that you're experiencing and stuff. And I, it's not even a question. It's just me pointing out to you just how amazing you are and the way that you shine that light out for so many people. So thank you. Um, <laughs> so when you have clients come in, what do your clients tend to gravitate to you for in regards to what kind of help they're getting? Um, what I've been experiencing is uh, the coaching actually is something that I'm opening up more so and, and building better on. So majority of my clients have been coming for me for the reflexology, for the energy work, the hot stone, which I'm getting to the point that I'm physically unable to do. So I sat and I kind of went, okay, so what is it that my clients really come to me for? Like, what is it? How do they, what, what attracts them? And those clients, I always found when I look back on a majority of them came in, sure, they enjoyed the reflexology or they enjoyed whatever the energy were, but it was the conversation, right? Because of the fact that no matter what they share with me, I intuitively get a response or say something that is exactly what they require to hear and what it is they need to hear. Um, my what I, my clients now are more people who are feeling stuck in their life. People who are feeling like life, you know, that life has been, they've been used as a doormat. 
you know, it's been abused, not so much the abuse in the sense of external abuse, but the abuse that we put on ourselves, right? Like uh, some people when we're stressed, right? I got a situation the other day and, and my son says, well, what did you do afterwards? Did you go, did you go for a cigarette? Did you go and, you know, like some people will go to alcohol, will turn to drugs <clears throat> or food or sex or whatever, the addictions, right? Like our, 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 our addictions, our go-to comfort stuff, you know, and sometimes it's okay to go to the comfort stuff when it's needed, but it's when we go to the excess or when we're not able to cope and handle what's actually going on and be able to work through it. Because I truly believe that when something happens, stuff like that, there's usually an underlying cause, like we're doing an abuse, like what is that cause? Like, um, Having been a recovered, like I quit drinking in uh, 1994, I was a recovered alcoholic for 23 and a half years. And for those, like at, when I was drinking, I was, it was drinking to escape, right? Because I wasn't happy with what was going on around me. My needs weren't being met and I didn't know how to ask for them. I didn't know how to express them. I didn't know how to share what it was I needed. And in all honesty, I didn't even know what it was I was missing. I just knew there was something inside of me that was, there's something missing, you know, and I wasn't able to identify it, right? So I help my clients identify what that need is to put a voice to their feelings, to put words to what they're experiencing, to bring a better understanding. And because of the fact as a perfect, uh, perfectionist, perceptionist, I'm able to see it from a different angle. You know, um, like you might, you may see a, a woman in a grocery store with a screaming child and your judgment might be, oh my gosh, she must be a terrible mother. You know, she's, she's not, she's just letting that child cry. Or maybe your judgment might be, or your perception of the situation might be, you know, she must beat that child because as soon as she raises that hand, the child screams louder, right? But you may not have any idea that they are in an abusive relationship at home. And it's not the mother. The mother might be raising the hand to comfort the child, but the father might be the one who's beating it. So the child sees a raised hand and just right away gets fearful. So I'm able to do that with people's lives. And when they sit and talk with me and share with me what's going on and I'll say, okay, so what do you think of that? How does that make you feel? Or what's they'll obviously if they're telling me what's going on, they're giving me their perception of it. So I says, well, what if, and I give a different point of view. So looking at it from a different, because so often what happens is we get stuck in our own selves, you know, and we are, brain starts to go when we're playing the tapes and we don't have anybody, you know, we could have that person who is like our close friend or whatever, but often they know you and they don't want to hurt you or they don't want to judge you. And I don't judge, please don't get me wrong. I, I'm, I'm the least judgmental person around. Um, but they, they, as coming to me and sharing those stories, I don't know a whole lot about what's going on other than what you shared with me so I I look at it in a different way and it's sometimes it drives me crazy because I do it on my everyday life it's like I'll pick up this water going oh well why did I pick it up this way if I would have been <laughs> just like, it's like, stop it yeah. <laughs> no and I think you're bringing up a really great point too because especially during this whole COVID thing it's amazing how many judgments are out there about how people are reacting to it. And honestly, every single reaction that people are having is perfect, but the amount of judging that's happening on the people who are reacting, um, it, it's a little unnerving that there is so much judgment that's going on. Um, and it, we never know what's actually happening in anyone's lives. Good. You know, it's, it, I've seen people judge others for two people going to the grocery store together mm -hmm. instead of just one per family, you know, people that have been out biking and like, it, I just see a lot of different posts by people. And the problem is, is we never know why that family might be out biking. Maybe yeah. they've been fighting all morning and they decided we need to move. We have no idea. It might be right. two people going to the store because one person has a license and the other person has social anxiety or do, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we have oh, no doubt. No idea. And I, I think it's fantastic that you're able to help people shift 
where those points of views and those judgments are coming in because a lot of times it's our own stuff that we're actually seeing in other people that we don't want to see or that we're not liking about ourselves or whatever so that's fantastic one finger pointing out three fingers pointing back yep it took me a very long time to understand what that meant people used to say that going well there's always when you're pointing a finger at somebody there's always three pointing back and i'm like what are they talking about it probably took me a long it took me probably about eight months of hearing that before i actually understood i'm like oh that's and as you now said, point with all of my fingers <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault <laughs> i'm not taking any responsibility for that <laughs> and i mean that's what we all want to do right none of us it's like a very human condition to not want to take responsibility for what our reactions are for what other people are doing for how we're being triggered by what other people are doing but and a lot, sorry a lot of times we're not even aware that we're being triggered and that's where i come in and help people right is because that's what I, the way i was I didn't, I wasn't aware that, you know, I was judging. I wasn't aware that I was being triggered, that it was something inside of me that was hurting, screaming to be healed, right? And was only showing its head how it knew how, because I didn't have the understanding or the people around me to help me work through it, right? Like the difference, and like I've worked with therapists, I've worked with psychiatrists, I've worked, you know, and they're all like, I remember in one time I was working with this one person and she's telling me what to do. And, you know, she's making these suggestions and that. And I looked at her, I says, have you ever experienced dot, 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 whatever it was we were talking about? And she says, no, I said, so how can you tell me how I'm feeling? Right. And it's like book smart. Right. And that's what they are. It's like, and don't, I'm not knocking therapists or they have their place for sure, for sure. But sometimes the book smart people don't have that life experience. You know, I'm street smart. I'm not book smart. And it's, it makes, a, it makes a big difference is, you know, cause we're not aware of that, that, that we're being triggered, that, that something inside us needs to be healed when we're reacting to a situation. So, so how, now today, how would you tell people to recognize their triggers? through the conversations, right? Like as it's, it takes practice, right? To become aware of it. You know, it's like, I have a one sign on my wall here and it talks about the word try, you know, and try actually the word try gives your permission, your brain permission to fail. So when you say, I'm going to try to do something, the brain goes, Oh, okay, well, I guess it's not that important. We don't have to worry about it. Right. You don't try to do it. You like Yoda says there you do, or you don't, there is no try. You know, yeah. like I, I often say, like I'll show people, I say, okay, so here, you know, I usually use a pen, but here's the glasses. Okay. Try to pick up the glasses. You either pick them up or you don't, right? It's, there's, there's no try to that. So it's, and I became aware of that, that word in my vocabulary. And when I read that, I thought, oh, interesting. So I had to start learning to use different words, which then actually started opening up my consciousness. So becoming aware of the language that I spoke to myself and to those around me, then allowed me to become more aware. And as we become more aware and become, you know, we begin to wake up a little bit more. And then that's how you start paying attention to when you're getting triggered. So it's like, if I yell at the kids, I stop and I'm like, hmm, what was that about? You know, was it really, you know, like the spilled milk? Yeah, how important is it? right? How important is it? And it's like, what is it about me? And it, with the spilt milk, what it was is my mom, right? It was the programming from my mother, right? It's like, oh, you don't make a mess. You always have a neat plate. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't. So it was a triggering from the tapes playing in my mind from my childhood that that was triggering me. So I was sins of the fathers are carried on to the, you know, for the children. Well, it's time to break that cycle because like, as far as I'm concerned, I've had enough. Like it's, I am not doing that to my children. This is like, I wasn't happy. It's time to break it. And as many of us know, the children nowadays are here to break it for us if we're not willing to do it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it amazes me because I've just really become aware of my own triggers. I'm going to say in the past seven years, 
Okay. And it's been a very kind of slow stepping journey because I was one of the ones pointing the fingers, you know, and trying to be all self-righteous and stuff. And then starting to see where my own triggers were actually showing up mm -hmm. and taking that responsibility for them. And it, it really is a learning curve for people. And when you talk about with the kids, I believe kids are here to be our triggers. Our yeah. kids, they help us heal all of those parts of ourselves that we have not been able to heal yet. And I quite often will ask clients when we are um, chatting about whatever they might be experiencing, how old are your kids right now? And they'll tell me what their ages of their kids are. And then we look back at what happened to you at the ages that your kids are now? And so often there is such a correlation between what's triggering them the most and what happened when they were their child's age. So it, it's so beautiful to just witness over and over again. Well, I've had it with my boys too, where they'll, I'll, I'll say something or I'll do something and they'll question me, right? Well, why is that important? I'm like, good point why is it let, let me think on that let me think on that right yeah. and a lot of it it comes back to how like you know i usually say you know what you're absolutely right or i'll speak and then i'll realize like i've gotten to the point now where i'll say something and i'm like blah, blah, blah. and then as it comes out of my mouth i'm like oh crap that wasn't necessary and then the next words out are an apology because they deserve that right yeah. But it's just, it's, as you said, it's a habit. It's not something that's going to shift overnight, but once we become aware of it and we're, you know, we, we can make a change because, you know, like we, um, for some reason, this has popped in my head. So often we look outside of ourselves for happiness. We look outside of ourselves for love. We look outside of ourselves for gratification, whatever the case is, and not realizing that all of that has to come from here first. Yes. And once it comes from here, from loving ourselves, then we are able to experience this on a completely different manner. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know you know that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so with your kids, just because we're talking about them, do they use the frequency machines as well? Well, because as I said, they create a field. So they don't have a choice. Okay. They Do they notice it. the difference then? They've grown, well, I can't say they've grown up with it. Um, because it is so subtle and they are going through, like they're 19 and 21 now. So in what, six years, they kind of went through the teenage years. So they were going through a lot of changes on their own that way. Yeah. But one experience I can share is that weekend in August of 2014, when Bill and Ann were here, um, my oldest boy came home with his girlfriend and she was uh, at that time, she, I, wish, I did a recording with her, a testimonial, and she shared, shared some amazing stuff, but for whatever reason, it didn't record. But she was uh, very angry. Um, she was very, almost on a depressed level, uh, very... She was just really like edgy and stuff. And they had come home and they had spent some time here. And then they took a walk uptown to go see the buskers. And Dylan actually noticed a change in her when she was a block away from the house. She was really nice and really, and then they got about a block away from the house. And he says, like, it's like we walked across the street and she was a different person. Wow. So they have noticed changes like in the beginning, but now it's to the point, like it's, to them, it's just yeah, another piece of equipment. You know, it's like, yeah. it's another one of mom's things, like whatever. <laughs> but people do notice when they come into my room, right? Like people walk into my healing room here and they just go, oh, right? Because I have the technology running here and we also have uh, structured water. So the structured water is for better hydration and better well-being and just overall health. And it's also frequency water and it's in the paint in the entire room. Oh, cool. So I have the frequency in the paint because I put mixed it with the paint before we did the California ceiling because I redid this whole room. So I mixed it in the paint. Plus there's crystals in the walls and sacred geometry on the floor. So it's a pretty awesome little room. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. I've been there and I love it. I know. Um, now with the frequency water, is that using the same, like the IQ machine as well? Yeah, it's actually created, it's not, you can't make the, well, you could actually make water on it, 
but there it's it done in a clean room um i don't have a bottle i got a bottles over there let me just grab one real quick just so i can show you So Dr. Emoto talks about structured water in yeah. his book, Messages from Water. And he talks now, about- Is he the guy from uh, What the Bleep Do We Know Down the Rabbit Hole that has the water crystals? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Dr. Emoto. So, and if you actually go to his website, he has something that's called Indigo Water. And he, and this is the Indigo Water, which is created with the IQ technologies. He traveled halfway around the world to meet with Robert Loy because he found that the, Robert Loy is the creator of the iCubes from uh, quantum sound therapy. Um, he found that the structured water that Robert Loy created was the only structured water that actually holds the frequency. Because like there are many different other machines out there. I don't know a whole lot about them, but what I am aware of and the research I have done that like you can get the ones that you put on your taps and it, it, it just spirals it. Sure, it'll structure it, but it won't hold that structure. That structure's probably gone within about a half an hour to an hour. So with this bottle, what you do is you take one ounce of the structured water and add it to a gallon of distilled water, which will then go through the, the whole bottle because water carries memory. Yeah. So when you put the memory of this into the distilled water, it will actually structure the rest of the distilled water. And it's the oh, only okay. water that we drink here. And it is created with the IQ technologies by Robert Loy in a clean room. There's a whole process that goes around with it. And then these little bottles. So there's different frequencies on them. All of them start with what is called the wellness water. And the wellness water is actually an award-winning water. And it's for created for like uh, better detox, better hydration, um, because of the, the way that the cell, like the way that the crystals are in the structure actually absorbs into the cells better than any other water. The indigo water, actually, Robert and Dr. Emoto is up on here. It says the Amroy water series, which is Dr. Emoto and Robert Loy. So the Amroy, so he created... Um, Dr. Emoto brought the frequent, the voice frequency of a thousand gifted children from China, from a school in China, and put the frequencies of their voice into the water along with the wellness. All the water starts with wellness and then other frequencies are added to it. So this one has the, the, the uh, frequencies of a thousand gifted children from Japan. Um, we also have the super calm. I always call, I call this one the bipolar water. Because if you're feeling really up and high, it will bring you down. And if you're feeling low, it will bring you up. So it's kind of a settling water. It's a super calm and it's, it's, it's an amazing one. And then we have the spirit molecule and the spirit molecule water has the frequency of DMT in it along with the wellness. So uh, my uh, friend and I, the one time we were out in, where were we? We were in Winnipeg and we had a gallon of this structured water and we're like, we were getting onto a plane and it's like, well, we're not going to dump this stuff. Like, this is like liquid gold to us. We're not dumping it. So between the two of us, we just sat in the lobby and chugged it. Well, people are walking by. We were laughing our heads off. It was like we were stoned. It's like, well, what are you guys on? Water. <laughs> That's awesome. And I have found that people who are very, very sensitive do feel a difference when drinking this water. So is that for sale through you as well then? Yep. Oh yeah. Yes. And how much is the bottle? Of uh, this this um, small bottle will make, uh, you know, the big 18 liter jugs, mm -hmm. right? So 32 liters of structured or 30, this will make 32 liters of structured water. So I use half a bottle in an 18 liter, yeah, 18 liter jug of water. So this will do two of them and they're $35. Okay, awesome. Awesome, awesome. And it, just because I don't know, what is DMT? DMT is a uh, spirit molecule. It's the molecule in all living things. Oh. Yeah. You'll have to look that one up. You'll I will like have DMT. to look that one up because I've just learned something new. I had, I've never heard of that before. So yeah, DMT is the spirit molecule. It's the, you've probably seen the spirit molecule show on Gaia. I think Guy has one on called Spirit Molecule, and I know there's some on YouTube too, but it's DMT is the spirit molecule, which is, it's in all living things. It's the molecule that's in all living things. 
Awesome. 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 So that would, on what, like, I understand what um, the well the wellness one does. I understand what the calm one does. So uh, the spirit molecule, how would that be incorporated into the body? Is it just to kind of amp up your chi energy or? It's, it's, it does lift you up. It definitely lifts you up. Like being uh, an energy person and someone who's quite sensitive and becoming more sensitive day by day. Um, it's not a water that I drink on a regular basis. Like if I go through, like I, I have the 18 liters on the, on the kitchen counter. And if I use, usually I'll do one 18 liter with this and then I muscle test, right? So yeah. it's like, okay, so what do I put in the jug this week? You know, and so it's like, do I take this one, this one, this one? And it's like, sometimes it will tell me yes to do two of these. Sometimes it won't. So it's just a matter, it does lift you up. And, and usually when I have clients come, um, if I have somebody here, I will ask them like, you know, muscle test. And if they're not familiar with muscle testing, I will muscle test for them to see what it is their body requires. Awesome. I've had clients. I always, this is what I serve when my clients come and I had one client come in and she comes back the second time. She goes, what did you put in that water? She goes, I couldn't stop peeing for two days. <laughs> and I says, that was detoxifying you. Yeah. because whatever she was retaining and it was just clearing out whatever right she says like I didn't drink any more water than like she says I was almost ready to go to the doctor I had so much and I said well I told you that was going to be very possible right like I bored you <laughs> but yeah because it does clean you out it does um it does help detoxify it helps hydrate it's awesome stuff yeah it sounds like it Absolutely. Sounds like it. So just one more question, because we're almost out of time here. And I, it, I know the time always goes by so fast. Um, so when clients are coming in to work with you, what kind of results can they expect to get from you between using the machines and doing the coaching and the energy healing and that sort of thing? What kind of results do people get? First word that pops into my mind is freedom. But what does that mean? It's freedom from whatever has been keeping you stuck. Freedom to be yourself. You know, uh, by working on the, like I have a 12 week coaching program that I'm gonna be running a beta on very shortly. And at the end of the 12 weeks, you will have a better understanding of who you are and what makes you tick. So you're gonna know what the, your triggers are. You're going to know how to feel more in, in your body. Because so, so often what happens is we feel outside of our body. We don't feel like we're actually in our bodies. And to be able to feel in your body and feel yourself, the freedom, uh, more happiness, right? Because of course, I'm going to incorporate laughter with that, you know, but the happiness and with the tones, you will notice the subtle changes. I wouldn't say it's going to be a huge change, right? It can be for some, no, most definitely, Um but like I had one client, uh, she was seeing a uh, professional therapist for 15 years and she came to me for three months. And after three months of seeing me every two weeks, fired her therapist. And I went, oh, dear. Right. Like I got a little nervous on that one. And I asked her, I says, well, why? Like, you know, what caused you to do that? And she says, I got more results out of you in the three months than I have in the last five years with her. Awesome. Right. So it's just, it's moving past that. And sometimes people really just need somebody to listen to them, you know, and they don't realize that what they're missing is being cared for. Right. And because I don't use judgment and I'm very compassionate and I'm, I'm a shoot from the hip type person. I'm going to tell you the way it is. You know that Catherine. Yeah. Right. I'm going to tell you straight out, you know, this is, you know, you got to stop that. That's not going to work. Or actually, no, I probably would never do that. That's a lie. I would only do that to my kids. <laughs> um, I would, you know, if there was something going on, it would be like in looking at it going, okay, is this like, is it really good for you to come home after a trade show and eat a jello? Like perhaps you could substitute that for something else or just try, you know, have the jello, but maybe before the jello, have a, have a slice of salary, depending on what the circumstances are, right? Have a slice of salary, wait a half an hour. And if you still want the jello, then go have the jello, right? So the different, you know, the different ways, a, a shifting of, um, shifting of perception, a shifting of the belief and a new way of living. So freedom. Yeah, absolutely. Freedom happiness. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> So if people want to get a hold of you to learn out, learn more about your coaching and the machines, I keep calling them the machines and I shouldn't, I should be calling them That's the IQ. Okay. Or the um, instruments. Yeah. Or the instruments. Okay. So if people are wanting to get a hold of you and connect with you, how can they do that? Um, they, you can, I have a, like a free 30 minutes uh, strategy call. Mm -hmm. that you can book on my calendar uh, it should be in the link if not I can post it afterwards there's the link for it or you can email me asp uh, which are my initials asp and that's sylvia parker coaching the letter u at gmail.com awesome and that might be you know and then from there like i can you know we can chat we can set up a zoom call and do a discovery call or a strategy call and see because you know i i I'm not a person, like I always say, if you're looking for someone who talks in butterflies and uh, butterflies and bunny rabbit fluffy tails, you're not going to get that with me. You know, if you want someone that's going to put your back up against the wall in a loving, gentle way, I'm your girl. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. And do you have any words of wisdom that you can share with the people on the live tonight, either for going through this whole COVID thing or just what? a message that you've just always wanted to share with the world. This isn't a message that I've always wanted to share with the world, but this is something that when you first asked the question, it's the first thing that popped in my mind. And I actually only wrote it down uh, two days ago. Okay. And it was, you know, um, I sat in the living room chair waiting for life to happen to me. And then I decided to allow life because I have to create my own life. You know, it was something on that. It's written down because that's why I write it down. I forget. But it's like, you know, for how many years I've sat around, and especially what I'm observing with uh, many people in, the, in this COVID, what they're doing is they're waiting to go back. And there is nothing to go back to because that's the past. Our future is holding a completely different new reality that we are not even aware of what's going to occur. So being open to that and allow, you know, you have you have to create your own life. Life isn't going to happen to you, right? It, it like the, we often say, life doesn't happen to us; it happens through us. But going even a little bit deeper is making a decision on what it is you are seeking to achieve, or what it is you are seeking, or your desires, and making it happen. Because nobody can make it happen for you. You've got to do it for yourself. I love that. I was literally just having a conversation with uh, my husband about that last week about who's funding your dreams and yeah. how so often we expect other people to give us permission to follow our dreams or we expect other people to give us the support needed to follow our dreams, you know? And so I know a lot of women who go, well, my husband doesn't want me to do that. So I'm not going to, and then they don't, and then they're miserable and they're angry. And it's your husband doesn't need to fund your dreams. Yeah. You know, nobody needs to fund your dreams that you need to be the person get off the couch and go create your life, whatever you want that to be. Yeah. So, Exactly. Yeah, your message is hitting home because I was literally having this conversation and it helped me to do a lot of reflecting on my own journey and how I've created what I've created and had to rely on myself. And I know you've had to rely on yourself as well to show up every single day to show up. And often too, it's not even that we're looking for somebody else to fund it is we have the tapes or the programming and we're living in fear what will they think you know what are people going to think if i dot 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 right well if it's true in your heart and you're loving it and it makes you feel good really who gives a fuck what they think exactly. you know if it's if it's yours and you know it it's like it's like with me you know buying the technology is like me with a lot of the different adversities it goes right back to that is because in my heart i knew that there was something different. I knew that there was something better and I had to follow that heart, you know? And so it's just sitting with it and, and allowing it, you know, get off the couch. Don't listen to Netflix. Don't, you know, do something, right? Do something, right? I even have a, a movement challenge, a, a private group, which is a movement challenge. And it's, you know, just to keep your body moving. 
right? And connecting with somebody every day. Yep. I love that. I love that. All righty. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Annette. Thank you. thank you, everybody who joined us. I have a thing of doing this now, and I have no idea why. I just keep, I don't know, mother marrying it or something. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, well, thing. You can do um, this one too. What? Who? What's? I forget what her name is. She's over there. She's beautiful. Um, I'll try. No, this yeah, is. I forget one. what her name is. <laughs> Um, yeah. Um, so thank you so much, Annette, for joining us. Thank you, everyone who hopped on to the live. If anybody's wanting to connect with um, Annette, you can reach out to her at ASP Coaching You, and that's the letter U, at gmail.com. And her Facebook page is facebook.com slash ASP Coaching You. And yeah, thank you so much, Annette. Thank you, thank you everybody who hopped on tonight. And have a great night, everybody. See ya. Thanks for joining. Bye.